All right. All right, folks, here we are again, another edition of our Chosky Chats. This week, we will be joined by trail rock star Danny Moreno. She just won her second national title of 2020. So despite 2020 being what it is, Danny is still out there putting in work making a lot of awesome things happen. So can't wait to talk with her. We do have a blog post up already with just some quick thoughts from Danny. That's chowski.run slash blog. If you want to check that out. Um, but we'll hopefully be going into a lot more detail with that once she pops on. So again, we'll be talking with Danny Moreno. She is one of our coaches. She is a pro athlete for Hoka Oneone and Rabbit based out of Santa Barbara, California. But from word on the street is that she is moving soon um up to the mountains hang on a sec looks like she's trying to send us a message here oh there she is um so we will be talking all things about this race her training what else is next um in just a second so we and then we'll get started so you guys are in for a treat there she is hey danny hey tyler how's it going it's going great how are you Good. How are you? Well, I, I am <laughs> not bad. Yeah. I like the How, hair. Thank you. Yeah, this is my. <laughs> it's twenty twenty, and I haven't gotten a haircut in a year. Look. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. How are you? How are you feeling after your race? Um, I'm. I mean, I'm feeling good. I'm definitely like it's hot here in California, so I just feel a little bogged down. I don't know how it is in Arizona. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm feeling good. We're not doing any workouts this week, so it's all about recovery. Awesome. And again, for those of you guys who are just joining in, um, Danny just won her second national title of 2020, right? The other one was earlier this year. Is that right? No, I won it last year. Okay, last year. sorry. Okay. <laughs> second national title of the last two years, so she's making a trend there, which is good. <laughs> That's what we like to see, one per year. Um you really snuck this one in. 2020 really tried to <laughs> do your number, but I'm glad you got it in. Um, no, so yeah, I, I want to talk about definitely about the race, about your training a little bit. Um, you know, I know we kind of just had a couple quick questions that we put up on the website, um, but I'd love to go a little bit more into detail. Um, so first, you, I, I know you were planning to run the Kodiak Ultra, or no, sorry, not the Ultra, the half, right? Half marathon? Yeah. Um, so... Was this also on the schedule, or was this a replacement for that race kind of once that got canceled? Yeah, this one was kind of, like, always in the background. The Spartan race was definitely, like, the A race, at least, you know, for all things considered 2020. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a really stellar field there that I was really excited about. Um, and the race had just done, like, a lot of really good precautions that made me excited about it, too. You know, just like, all right, yeah. everyone's going to feel really safe. Like, this is this going to be a great event. Um, and then, unfortunately, out of all the things to happen were the wildfires, which is now like yep. a season in California. Um, so that's unfortunate because the, the race director tried so hard to, like, make it work. Um, yeah. So we had, like, my train was definitely geared towards that course, which um, had a lot more climbing than the Berkey race. It, um, I think it was, like, a 5K climb at the beginning um, and then just, like, rolling hills and then a long downhill so more like kind of what I'm used to uh so we worked a lot on my climbing and it was also at altitude also um mm -hmm. so when we shifted to this race <laughs> that race happened and then this this race so I found out the Monday of this race and then this race was like three weeks away so I had like two-ish weeks you know before like the taper week um mm -hmm. and me and my coach like pretty much just settled like, all right, you know what, let's just do it. Let's go for it. So then we took my training kind of in an opposite direction because having hmm. run this race before, I knew it was going to be a lot faster. So we yep. supplemented the hills for um, just more road stuff to like try and get my speed up and it ended up working. So. <laughs> gotcha. No, I mean, it certainly did. So I, I w I'm curious to hear a little bit more about kind of the workouts you were doing because I know you're someone who has – I'd say unique approach to the trail stuff. You kind of jump back and forth between working out on the roads, working out 
on the hills, on the trails. I know at some point you said you kind of would do like one week of trail training and one week of road training. Like, is that what this buildup was like where you were kind of back and forth or was it more, we're just really focusing on the trails because that Kodiak race was going to be so much more kind of like vert and technical focused. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, Yeah, I kind of bounce everywhere. Uh, It's just the training that I found has kind of worked for me. Um, I have done like the one trail week and one road track week in the past when I've had more time for Mm -hmm. buildups. But for Kodiak, what we did is I was on the track one time a week and then um, I would do hard hills and um, like a faster paced long run. It's like a decent long run where it wasn't taking a lot out of me. Um, And that ended up like working out pretty well. And the track workout, which the track workouts, which is what was really cool is that when we transferred to Berkey, I realized like how tired the hill workouts were actually making me so that my track workouts got faster. Uh, nice. which was, like, a big confidence booster going into it. Um, and like one of the better track workouts I had going into it is we had, um, I think it was like some 150, some 300s, a good pace mile, 300s, 150s. Um, huh. And he just wanted me to run the mile at like a comfortable pace, like something that like feels fast but not like I'm like sprinting and mm-hmm. I ended up running the mile um, in like five Oh six. And <laughs> I was like, okay, like <laughs> I feel like for a trail runner, I was like, I, I'm kind of getting some wheels back. Like, wow. good. and then I finished the workout and, and the one fifties and three and three uh, hundreds were quicker than that. Um, wow. So I was like a confidence builder. And then for sure. uh, I did a lot of in and out miles which I, I personally love. It's like mm-hmm. you go fast for a mile and then kind of steady pace for another mile. And so I had some sets of like seven and 10 miles like that. Um, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, okay. So now take us to, to race day a little bit. So, I mean, you talked a little bit about the precautions that, uh, that the Spartan race was taking. So, you know, for those of us who, I haven't raced at all um, in person and, and well, I guess since the marathon trials, but for those of us who haven't raced during the pandemic, like what, what was that experience like? Was everyone kind of masked up? Did you have to race with a mask on? Like what, what was the experience being at the race? Like, yeah, it was super, I mean, it's just different, you know, like, cause spectators technically aren't allowed. Um, and you kind of like miss that energy but um the race Mm -hmm. did a great job for us like we had to wear a mask in a lot of places like pretty much unless you weren't actively racing you were wearing a mask uh which is understandable and then um the start we were all spread out so like there's a couple pictures where it's like us listening or uh doing the national anthem and we're all kind of spread out um but yeah and then once once you started racing like you could take your mask off and then people were just courteous of one another, you know, when they were passing and stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, I felt super safe. And <laughs> there's like a funny video when I fa- uh, passed the finish line where I'm talking and they're like, put your mask back up. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm just so stoked right now. Like I should put this back up. I'm so sorry. You just kind of forget, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the life we live in now. The new normal, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Post, post race masked up interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So, okay. And now, Let's let's talk through the actual race because you wrote about this and I, I loved your description of of kind of the play by play. It sounded like you had a great duel, um, but for those of us who or for those of our listeners who haven't read the recap, can you kind of just give them the play by play of like how did the race play out? Yeah. Um, so for better or for worse, like many times with these races, you don't know who's gonna be there until like they write a preview. Um, and so (laughs) you kind of just like know from talking to other friends, because the community is pretty close, like, especially amongst like the elites and pros, you're like, Hey, you showing up to this race? Like, are you not showing up to this? What's up? Um, and so like the few friends that I knew were going to either be there or not be there, that's who I was aware of. Um, but what I had to keep in mind is like when I ran this race three years ago was like Ashley Brossovans, like one of her first trial races and she kicked butt and she, you know. It was coming off the roads and I'm like, there's going to be people like that, especially like really stellar women who 
also haven't had the chance to race this year. This is one of the few championships that are happening. So I just yeah. was expecting someone with great PRs to show up. Um, and there was plenty. <laughs> um, but, uh, so my, my friend Sam was there. She, she's great. She was on the NACAC team with me. Um, so I was aware of her. And then um, this girl named Bria, who we learned about like the day before, uh, she got <laughs> Um, I want to say 27th at the trials. Do you know Bria? No, I'm just laughing oh. at the comments. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and then uh, Janelle, which I hadn't met her, but I like did a quick research on her like the night before. I was like, oh, like, sh like she's fast. Uh, I think yep. her PRs are like 11 flat in the steeple, which that alone wow. is amazing. <laughs> and yep. steeple chasers, as you know, like tend to fare really well on the trails. Do well on trails, um, yeah. Yeah, so I like was aware of them, not really not sure what they look like, but like they would, you know, show their cards and I'm sure there's other girls that are in there. Um, uh, so the race started and <laughs> it's just so anticlimactic. I don't know if it is for you. I just think it's so funny when trail races start because it's, you know, <laughs> it's just not a track race. It's like you shoot the gun and we're going off at like six minute pace. Like it's nothing too exciting. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, I just thought- And you're talking about a half marathon. Wait, wait till you watch like a hundred mile start or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Sorry about that. Wait, okay. I'm having- laughing way too hard um so All good. then we start and i i you know those girls kind of just like went to the front and um me and my coach based on it was a new course so like based on past years we kind of guess where i might be it's like could be six minute pace could be 6 30 pace like it just depends on what this new course brings um plus yeah. it's wet grass and it's muddy yeah. you know so that slows you down um <laughs> And so uh, we started, I think we were probably going like 6.30 pace, I'm going to guess. And then uh, usually like in the first couple of hills, you start to see like, okay, who is ready to go, who's not. Um, so I think I passed Bria, like in, Janelle took off like from the beginning. Um, hmm. I think I passed Bria at like mile two is like when I, we like on a hill, we kind of broke apart and she was probably with me for a little bit. Um, and then so I just started like chasing after Janelle. And it's so hard to tell, maybe like two and a half, three miles. Like from that point on, we were just racing each other back and forth, back and forth. It was so wow. um, invigorating to like actually get out there and race. Like I was like, this is what I've been missing. This is awesome. <laughs> and like, I would try to throw surges at her and like, she wouldn't break. And then she would throw surges at me and I wouldn't break. And like, wow. we, would, we would give each other like some space, but like not enough. You know, so like I would let yeah. her go on downhills a little bit. She would let me go on uphills. And um, yeah, the whole time I was just like, dang, this girl is a fierce racer. Like kudos, like no matter what <laughs> happens during this race, like she is bringing out the best of me today. This is awesome. Um, and so I was wearing track flats. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I saw you say that. <laughs> Yeah, which, like, most seasoned trail runners would say, like, hey, Danny, like, what are you thinking? <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was just, it was such a fast course in comparison, and I consider myself, which this will end up being the really ironic part, a very nimble and coordinated person. Um, and so I'm like, whatever gets thrown at me, I'll be fine, like, in track class. And so <laughs> I think it was, like, mile... It was like going into mile 10 or mile 10. Again, it's hard to say when you start to get towards the end. Um, yep. There was like a really, really big hill, which I was aware of around there. And we were still together. And in my head, I'm like, okay, like, I'm just going to send it so hard in the downhill and just start hauling to the finish. Um, and... I think she had the same idea probably because we both start, you know, like racing power hiking, which only really happens when it's intense. And <laughs> we uh, both crested and just hauling. And what I know happened now looking back at it is I was leaning so forward trying to like push the gas that like my flat kind of slipped out and I just – face plant i don't know if i can oh, that's man. why i'm being so concerned about my word choice you can but say I, whatever you want i just eat shit so bad and <laughs> it's just hilarious because in the like to me this whole movie has been kind of like a, a sea biscuit race you know back and forth back and forth and i just 
pulled like a like a bubble boy moment and <laughs> and um it's all in milliseconds but you know how you kind of yeah, yeah your thoughts and i'm just like okay i need to get the f up and like just start chasing her as fast as i can and she kind of like within those very small moments she turned a corner and I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. Like, I know what speed I have. I can run 506 on a track, which, you know, is nothing to a road person. Um, and I was like, I can, I can still win this. I can still win this. And so, like, I start chasing her. And I'm just, like, pushing, pushing, pushing. And, like, I'm like, where did she go? Okay, she must be dropping, like, 430s at this point. Because I feel like I'm, I'm sprinting for my life. Um, uh -huh. And then uh, there's a couple more turns. Turns, I'm just like, wow, like holy wow like she's just throwing down but she could fall too just like I fell um and then I just go and I break the tape which was crazy um and then it turned out that she had taken a wrong turn at some point like wow. after, after that within like milliseconds which is just like the craziest thing to me that's yeah. that's crazy and so you really didn't know that you were in first until you saw them holding the tape up exactly exactly so i was racing as if i was gonna catch her you know like yeah, yeah. I, I could catch her any small point i'm like okay maybe she's gonna because we still had a couple miles to go about that time um and i was like that's anybody's race still i've fallen before and caught people and vice versa other yeah. people have fallen before and caught me like the race isn't over until it's over um mm -hmm. but yeah and then she ended up being a few minutes back um which is wow. unfortunate but yeah, it was just, it was a crazy race, and she like definitely brought out the best of me. Like I couldn't have ran that time on my own for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's I think what so many of us miss about competition is like that just getting pushed by other people, whether it's you know a rival or a friend or you know a huge pack if you're kind of the you know weekend warrior in the marathon or something. I think that's a big part of what we miss. But you know, it's super cool that you got to do that. Yeah. No, it was really cool. And it was, um, it like I said in, in the blog post, like a great reminder on many fronts, like to not give up, to keep going. You like never know what's happening with the other person. Um, and yeah. just study your course because I ironically had taken a wrong turn there a couple of years ago, like very <laughs> similar <laughs> so huh. the same course. Um, and so this year I like made a point to kind of like it's kind of hard to know it exactly, but I knew like the general shape of it. It's like, okay, at the end, I should be going like this and this and like to the yep. minute. Um, which yeah, it's just part of the sport. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You gotta, gotta know the course, gotta be able to follow the markings, but yeah, it's, it's always tough when it's decided at the very end like that. But yeah. It is what it is. Like you said. Um, okay. Well tell us, I guess what's next now. I mean, you've had such a, like, I mean, it's been a crazy year, but it seems like very successful. You're obviously super fit. Are you going to try and race any more? Is there anything else on your calendar at this point? Yeah. Um, so I was trying to decide what to do next. I had a few ideas and I was talking to people. Um, but I'm definitely going to do the Moab Trail Marathon, which I'm super oh, stoked cool. about. Yeah. When is that one? That is, it's, very well be tomorrow with how little time there is in between. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's November 7th. So. November 7th. Oh, you got plenty of time. You got a whole month. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's awesome. Is that the, is that a U.S. championship again? Because I know it has been in the past. Yeah. No, it, yeah. Is, it is. And from I know who's racing so far, um, it'll be really good. So I'm, I'm really excited about it and nice. um, it'll be nice to like jump up in distance again, just cause I did that 50 K last year. Yep. Um, and I like the longer stuff. I like training for the longer stuff, even though it takes more time. Like it's, it's <laughs> it takes like a different type of grittiness and focus, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. and then I'll kind of go from there. Cause this was, like, okay, so last year I did the longer stuff, and then the year before that I mainly did half marathons. So when I was training for this, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like the good old days. And as soon as I did it, I was like, I want to do another ultra. My coach was like, what is <laughs> Awesome. Um, so I guess longer term, thinking, you know, over the next couple of years, is that the direction you want to go? Do you think you'll kind of 
always keep in touch with this kind of speed, or do you think we'll see you going to 50K and 50 miles and beyond at some point? Yeah, I would say I'm definitely ready to try some longer stuff. I don't know if I'm ready to, like, full commit, <laughs> like, deep dive, deep dive in. Um, like, Lake Sonoma, 50, has always intrigued me. Um, mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Western, but that that's a beast of its own. I, I don't know. But next next year, at least right now, like, my main focus will be OCC. Um, oh, so awesome. About that. Yeah, so it's, like, kind of a little bit of both in a way. Yep. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to be able to do everything. Uh, <laughs> I know, it? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. And then last thing I wanted to ask there, uh, word on the street is that you might be, uh, moving, relocating at some point, um, is, can you confirm or deny that at this point publicly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I can confirm that. So I've been in Santa Barbara since uh, 2010, which is just so crazy to think wow. about. Yeah, it's been a while because I went to school here. Um, but yeah, I'm moving to Mammoth, at least temporarily. Um, and then past that, who knows what's going to happen. But um, at least for me, like, I feel, I feel proud of what I've been able to accomplish, you know, training at sea level for the last couple mm -hmm. of years. And racing at altitude like 99.9% .9 of the time <laughs> living at sea level. Um, but I'm excited to see like if living at altitude can make a difference and like how much um, of a difference it can make and if it can like push me into that next kind of area that I'm looking to be in. Awesome. Okay. Well, we will definitely be excited to see. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we will hopefully be cheering you on from afar uh, at Moab uh, on November 7th. That's very exciting to know. So we'll make sure that we uh, talk to you again at some point around then. But best of luck with the recovery, with training for that. And yeah, keep in touch. Keep us posted. Let us know how things are going. I will. Thanks, Tyler. Really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Have a great time. Have a great night. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.